Okay. I think we are good to go. What is up, App Nation? Sorry for the late start, but I've got a phenomenal guest for you guys too. Welcome to another YouTube live stream. We're going to talk all about analytics, the analytics for your app. So key in the foundation of really helping you grow and also the analytics for any UA campaign that you might be running. I've got a special guest for you guys. Super excited to have him on. He's been running analytics for Warner Brothers, Unity, Hush, exploding kittens he's been a past podcast guest of mine somebody i had to wait a couple of years to finally get him on i'm super excited to have him on today to answer all of your questions around analytics around growth we're gonna get to some of the app audits as well so without further ado let me introduce a guest his name is chuka ikoku and he is the founder at diversity.io so if you're looking to hire a more diverse team, whether it's executive team, just a whole around team, go check out diversity.io. They've got a lot of great talent that you're looking for if you really want a diverse pool. And in our upcoming interview on the podcast too, Chica really talks about how having a diverse team actually can 3x your company's valuation. So Chico, welcome, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk about stuff that I'm passionate about. Uh, and share whatever little things I've learned. So why don't we talk about that? And I'll go through some some, some of the shout outs, but tell us a little bit about the whole like 3X of the company valuation because of a diverse team. Yeah, so uh, Kaufman Fellows did a very thorough uh, about the impact of diversity. And uh, when, we, when we're talking about diversity, we're talking about how diverse a founding team is. And uh, what they found was that the, the teams that they looked at that were that had diverse founding teams, you know, people of color, uh, you know, like even number of men and women, were uh, returned a 3.3x, you know, valuation uh, or, or multiple versus teams with uh, all white founders. Teams with all white founders brought about a 2x return. So the 3.3x is obviously more, much more significant than uh, if a founding team wasn't diverse, and that's that's really the notion of that. But there are a lot of other studies, you know, like the ones done by McKinsey. Comstat did another one, but all these companies, you know, they look at the impact from different angles and find that it just makes for a lot more, uh, a lot less attrition with teams, um, more stability, more productivity, and of course, ultimately more bottom line. I like it. All right. I'm going to give you a few shout, shout outs to people. Leandro, what's happening, man? Good to see you every week. This is a new name that I haven't seen. One a day studios. And then Demetrios, good to see you. Familiar names on here, Vivek, Leandro, good vibes. And then Vineeth, what's happening, my friend? True Dreams, always good to see you. The So if you guys got questions for Chuka, please leave it into the comments. We'll get to all of them. Here's what we've got in terms of the app audit as well. And I hate looking down on my screen all the time. But here's the apps that we'll be going through and some of the questions you guys have filled in. So if you guys are interested in app audit, it's just appmasters.com slash audit. And if you got questions, but not an app, you don't, you don't want, you don't want us to look at your app. Well then just leave a question and say no app. Don't worry about the app audit. Here's the question I have because that's on the form as well. Found some emails about that. So AR spiders, we're going to go through that, this game, you got I did try to find some games because you know, you've got some tremendous knowledge in the gaming space. And then we got this earthquake alert and this fishing forecast. So I sent an email to everybody letting you know that you guys were be, going to be on the audit. But Chuka, let's start with this, man. So when you were talking about UA and analytics, what are some things that you're looking at from that perspective? Sure. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to UA and analytics, I, I think it's, uh, it's now it's probably safe to say that it's the uh, you know, scientific or tried and true approach in the sense that it's always important to think about what your uh, growth lever is going to be. And when I talk about growth lever, I mean, okay, if you if you have an application and it's a good idea and you know, it's a great app, what what are your what, what do you what, what's the thing that's going to make it grow in terms of user acquisition? And don't tell me spent like money, you know, like the, the days of uh, in these studios wanting to spend millions of dollars are just history. Uh, I think that's really a plus, and that's something that comes when you, you know, you've already sort of passed that first wave of success. But uh, until then, you know, you certainly want to think about that. And then the second thing, uh, Steve, it's what you and I talked about, you know, last time we spoke, uh, the engagement lever. You know, and the engagement lever is the thing that sets your application apart. That's going to keep people coming back. 
Uh, in terms of metrics, you know, because of course, like what, what is, we can't use the word KPI or the 10 KPI without talking metrics, but day one retention, of course, that's standard, day three, day seven and 30. Uh, the, I would say the session length, like number of sessions and session length per day are metrics that I definitely look at as well to measure engagement. Uh, and then of course, on the monetization side, your average revenue per DAU and the lifetime value, which which lifetime value varies by by uh, game type or app type, but 90 days or 100 or 180 days. Uh, some hardcore games can go up to 360 days even. But the whole idea is that that will be the average revenue per install over that period of time. So uh, you know that those those are some of the metrics that I think about. And uh, of course, new user completion. If you have a tutorial, it's important that people get through your get through that first bit before they 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 you can take the training rolls off. You know, what I always look at too is the, I, I kind of say like, here's the three, I don't know what the right word is going to be like the three pillars. And so like that user, what you were talking about, the user onboarding process, that's the first thing, right? You got to make sure that's right. You got to make sure your monetization's right. You got to make sure your what you talked about, the engagement levers, right? If you can kind of focus on those three pillars or those three metrics, you probably have something valuable and something successful too. And I know talking with other people, and I've got a question from True Dreams, they said that like certain ads actually help increase retention and certain ads actually help. So you might be paying a cost, a higher cost per install, but the retention and lifetime value is a lot higher on these ads. And so these are probably the things that you look at too, right? Yes. I mean, it's said that uh, the, the creatives are now the most impactful factor uh, when it comes to the success of a game, which is crazy, you know, creative meaning ads, you know, like where it's video or, or banner ads and all. And the whole idea there is that, you know, you, you have, the, there, are certain pe there are certain kinds of users, let's call these like your whales or your uh, core users or engaged users that it takes, you can't just get their attention to download your app uh, with, without putting the effort behind it. So obviously the creatives that give a, bit, a lot more thought to showcasing what your app does, the potential value that it could, a user can gain from it, whether it's dopamine triggers or uh, just some kind of productivity, uh, then, then you get, you win those high quality users. And I think that's probably the, the rationale behind why these ads, like the type of ad has, uh, has a big impact. Love it. Okay. Got a question from True Dreams. I'm going to try to understand this. Maybe you can help me, Chuka. Does retention CPI matter for mobile apps? Absolutely. Uh, so retention definitely matters. I mean, retention is everything. You know, if you don't have people coming back to your application, then the, the application's not uh, like alive. Uh, so retention is everything. That's probably, in fact, that is definitely your most important uh, metric. And that's why I said day, day one retention was the very first thing I mentioned uh, when it comes to KPIs. Uh, so as far as the CPI goes, you know, the cost per install, uh, it, it matters for sure. Uh, it's not a it's not an absolute uh, metric because some some applications just have good virality. So everybody heard everybody's heard about it. Uh, once upon a time, apps like TikTok may not have needed to spend anything, but they they blew up. You know they got big parents behind them, and then of course now they can start spending. So I think when if you're like a non indie app that has a big budget behind you, then that's when the CPI matters more because you know you want to make sure that you when you spend it's our, we call it ROAS, so uh, you know, return on ad spend. You want to make sure that the return on ad spend is positive, and that's when the CPI matters. Pressing the wrong buttons here. All right. The next question from True Dreams as well, and we got some good questions coming in, so keep them coming in, guys. Steve and Chuka, according to your experience, what do you think about Twitter ads? Is it good to run campaigns for games? Have you guys run some stuff on Twitter? Uh, I mean, run Twitter as in the past. Um, Twitter was a network that we considered when uh, we felt like we had mastered uh, Facebook uh, and, of course, like ads from Iron Source and Unity ads. Uh, so I think Twitter is good, but I, but it, it, I would say it more so depends on the type of application. Uh, most of my experience has been in the game space, so uh, Twitter isn't necessarily like number one uh, for. Uh, ads in the gaming space. Whereas like if you were in a different space, for instance, like, I don't know, maybe so social perhaps, uh, Twitter might be a, a better route for that. So it really depends on the vertical that you're operating in. 
Yeah. What, so when you said you've been more, your experience has been more in games, what kind of ad networks do you focus on when you're launching a new game? Is it primarily Facebook? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Facebook has user interest information. And because of that, of course, they have the demographic info as well. But a step further, they also have uh, interest. And because of that, it, it makes it easier to target your uh, core audiences. They also allow for lookalike uh, targeting. So you can, since Facebook has such a, a broad reach, you know, they have billions of people, you're, you're able to uh, do lookalike modeling, which is when you upload a uh, user base, like a list of users from your app that have shown uh, good behavior, like high monetization or high retention. And then you find people like them on Facebook. So things like that really help. Uh, and that's what makes Facebook exceptional. Uh, but you know you have other other networks like Unity. Yeah, I'm not just saying Unity because I work there, but I do know that it's one of the top uh, sources because they have a huge network of gamers in their pool. So um, so Unity Ads is also another route. And now uh, you know you have contenders like Apple Search Ads and of course Google uh, that they they run the stores. So obviously they have a lot of information and also could help with uh, with good optimization. Yeah, one thing I've been really trying to get the audience to focus on is Apple Search Ads Basic. Like, yes, you don't get the visibility of what keywords are going after, but you can say, like, here's my cost per install target, and Apple will do a good job trying to hit it. If it's too low, obviously, you know, you won't get that much, that many impressions. But I've heard from a lot of different clients that it's working out for them. Hey, Chuka, so with the lookalike campaigns, it is a thousand people that you have to have, right? Is that the minimum? I forget what the number is. There, you know off the top of your yeah, they're they're about. I haven't checked in a while, but uh, it, I know for sure that there's a limit because you yes, you can't just like put like three people, one you know. So yeah, they just put time. me and Duca, and that's it. I'm gonna let it run. <laughs> <laughs> so one last question. We'll get to some of the app audits too. Is and this is the golden question, and I think it's a very loaded question, but. How do you increase retention? What should you be fo be focusing on? And let's just focus more on the game side of things or whatever you want to focus on. But what is what do you, what kind of advice would you give somebody? Yeah, so again, I think it will come back to the type of application. Uh, but in this case, if we're discussing uh, games, uh, you know, for games, it's important to, of course, know what your data says. Uh, and the data generally gives a sense of what, what makes people stay and what makes them not stay. So I'll come back to the engagement lever, all right? Uh, your engagement levers are what you've decided is what I want to bring users back to the application for. So typically what I would do is I would take a pool of users and then I would break them apart by their uh, retention metric. You know, like, okay, these guys came back or, or these guys played for this long or came back the next day, these guys didn't. What, what were the different things that they did? And then based on that, then I would determine, okay, these guys completed the tutorial or they unlock this thing. Is there any way that I can make the unlocking of this thing easier or more accessible so that people can see the value faster of the application? Uh, one example I'll give real quick is with uh, Clash of Clans. Uh, Clash of Clans, you know, of course, they built a fantastic uh, game economy and uh, they did what a lot of games hadn't done uh, up until that point, which was give a significant chunk of premium currency for free. I mean, I'm talking about the gems that you can later buy for cash. So they gave that for free. And by the time users went through that, they were convinced that, oh man, like th these guys aren't, they trust what they're selling so much that they're willing to let us try it for free because they know we'll get hooked. Uh, and of course the, the, the hooking happens, you know? So uh, for them, they realized that, okay, access to some of the uh, tiers of gaming experience we want, we're not gonna keep that from early users. And that's why they just give you, you know, like 125 gems or whatever it is. And then you can, you can experience the application based on that. So that's just, that's just one way. Um, but the most important thing is really understanding what you expect will bring people back. And that's why I'm a big believer of, uh, uh, you know, enjoying like being a customer of the products that you work on, because if you do, then it makes the imagination easier. If you're not coming back every minute or every day or whatever the case may be, then that should tell you something about the, the masses. One thing that I know people like hacks. So you tell me if I'm all completely off base on this, but you know, these starter packs that people have where maybe it's on day two or the second open, they'll have a little starter pack promotion. Hey, you know, save like 50% off the starter pack. You get these gems, you get these coins, you get this, you get that. Do those, I found with working clients, they said, it's great for monetization and 
I've heard also that it's good for retention as well, because, you know, they're more likely if people are buying, they're more likely to stay within the game. Do you have any thoughts or opinions on these starter packs? Yeah, I, it's definitely important to have a starter pack if you if uh, you have a game um, with a uh, IP economy. But the caveat I will give there is that at the end of the day, only three to five percent of people will ever pay in your in your game, and uh, you you want to get to that conversion rate as fast as possible. Uh, but you you also want to stay with it. You know, you don't want to just convert and then like you know these guys never pay again because you 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 got them on in on a starter pack and that was it. So uh, I I would err on the side of convincing the user that your the the things to do in your game are worth paying for uh, than just qu quick and easy monetization because it's easy to monetize someone on a starter pack because you know you're giving them fifty percent off and a variety of items, but you know that's not going to get you far uh in the long term and what, what really would set a successful application apart is long-term healthy monetization and of course retention i like it all right we're going to get to some of these questions later on too but i do want to look at this app right now ar spiders so joe kim is the name he wants us to i don't know what his question was <laughs> chuko but it's like realistic visuals clean interface so we got, i guess we want to just look at the app it is a paid app and i think one thing and you could jump in whenever you want chuko but one thing that i'm looking when i'm looking at this app i'm finding is i like this you know scare your friends he seems to get be having some traction because he's got 4.4 and 300 ratings so he's probably getting some downloads for this the thing to consider is to maybe increase the price a little bit to 199 because i don't think i haven't found too big of a difference this was early on in the days in terms of increasing the price yes you're going to get less conversions but at the same time you're going to make more money the screenshots while i love them i would try to put like more like this scare your friends or something where people are loving the app about and so i feel like just showing these spiders while cool you want to also talk about like the benefits within these screenshots, especially as a paid app. Definitely. I, I, I hundred percent agree. I mean, uh, so now we're talking about app store optimization and, uh, ASO is, I would definitely say that in the last three years, uh, has become one of the most important, uh, determinants of a successful mobile game. And uh, that's a mix of things. It's a mix of the way you describe the app. It's a mix of the app icon, the screenshots, and all that good stuff. But I will, I do agree with you, Steve, that the screenshots are one of the easiest ways to sell your app because Apple is already going to show it up anyway if somebody searches for, I don't know, spiders or AR. So right. you don't, you you want each th those screenshots. The the for lack of a better word, the easy thing or lazy thing to do is just to show actual screenshots. But if you look at a lot of if you look at all the successful applications they never do that they show us a, a slip, snippet of the screen and then they, they they describe what you see outside of that screen so they will say scare your friends with spiders you know a variety of ten thousand different kinds of spiders uh this that that this and then that way you're at it's, a, it's like a billboard you have like six billboards within the application and i only see four i think you can have up to six screens if i'm yeah. not mistaken so i would i would max that out too yeah i think you can go up to okay there we go yeah so it's to ten. To but you know joe says in the comments ar spiders looks cool it'd be a great contender for a video preview i agree actually too juka like i'm not always a big believer in video previews because sometimes they get costly and you don't always get the roi but for an app like this you can imagine that this is more of an entertainment app like as this while scrolling as you were talking scrolling through all the reviews and people say how realistic it is how fun it is and so maybe even have a video preview of people showing the app and people getting scared you know like the people want this entertainment value of it and so i think a video preview would be interesting for this and i don't so let me look it up because i don't think it shows up ar spiders as on the web if they have a video preview so let me look that up what are your sure. thoughts on that yeah it, it doesn't have a video preview so i'm looking at it. yeah I, I mean 100 percent agree uh I, I haven't done a video preview oh, uh there is. like so i have oh they, okay i see it yeah so here so it there's is. a video so point your device it's okay i'm glad to do this yeah let's do this ah oh cool okay perfect so they're they're already doing it that's, I, don't, that's I can't cool. hear anything, unfortunately, but yeah, it does look pretty cool. Whoa. 
I think they've done a good job. Like the only thing I would do is like try to put some more text, like scare your friends. Cause you can't do that. Right. Like, think of it like a little commercial. This looks legit, yeah. dude. Whoa, that's good. <laughs> I would start off with that. Like that simple, that end would be the, the best way of doing it. Scare your friends and do that, that last one and then show the rest. Yeah. Because that's where people, that everything looks cool of this video. <laughs> I kind of want this half. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to cover for this app, Chico? Yeah, I, I think uh, you, you hit a point on the price point, you know, um, so 99 cents. First of all, like I would even I would I would go a radical step and say the app should be free. And then you could, you know, do some kind of in-app purchase, like maybe different kinds of spiders or lenses. Uh, but an app like this, I feel should have more reach. And the thing is that, again, because the majority of the free to play users will they don't come into they, most of them don't come into an app saying I'm going to pay. They come in there wanting to be convinced to pay, and that's really where the money is. That's why like mobile is like a you know hundred billion business because the, you know pe people they don't know that they're willing to pay until they pay. And I feel like we you know we should be taking advantage of that versus the 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 you know guaranteed but much potentially smaller uh, change that comes from uh, from the premium apps. Yeah. I kind of agree with you. I think once people get get into the app, they see it, they probably want scarier spiders. So maybe give away one of the easy spiders, but yeah, those scary spiders would be more interesting too. I like that idea. All right. You might, you might be able to make more money. So I want to give some other people the comments just for those who are listening onto the podcast. Demetrio says, maybe try different screens with different scenarios that you can scare your friends. Joe says, bingo, that video preview is awesome. So yeah, we agree with this too. All right. The other question to go while I pull up the next app is, I think this is probably, I kind of know what you're going to say for this, but I want to say it anyways. So Tibrius asks, what is the most important metric for educational apps? That's an interesting one. Uh, I mean, it still has to be your retention. You know, it still has to be a retention because uh, if, you know, education app, it's like someone going to school, uh, you want them to go to class every day, like to not miss any class. And uh, schools, you know, uh, apps are different because people have the choice of coming back to them, unless it's like a school app, you know, that you're required. Uh, but you definitely want to leverage push notifications and I don't know, like, you know, challenges that keep folks coming back. So I would say uh, probably the 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 daily number of sessions the session length and the 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 retention in fact not just day one retention but like the, the whole gamut you know d1 3 7 14 day 30 uh so that way you you're assured that um your your people are taking advantage of what they come into your app for and the last thing i would say is like with an education app it's probably more uh specific to uh what like let's say with du duolingo right you know you're learning spanish duolingo has you know they're able to keep track of people's uh, levels so Duolingo should con consider the, 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 the app successful if people become fluent in the language, right? And that could take, you know, it could vary uh, for different people, but that should be their metric is like how many people are completing our fluency rate uh, score or whatnot. And I think, you know, you should have something similar uh, in the case of the education app, but yeah, standard retention, you know, session length and all that good, the engagement stuff. Yeah, I, I knew that's what you were going to say. And I completely <laughs> agree. <laughs> so I was like, should we even talk about this? But I'm glad you said it the way you said it. The Vivek asks, hi, Steven Chuka. Is Firebase Analytics good for mobile apps in terms of you tracking user engagement, in-app subscription ads, or are there better ones out there? Yes, uh, Firebase is great. Um, I like Firebase. We use it for one of the apps that we're working on. So uh, yeah, I would recommend it. Uh, Depending on how deep you want to get with your analytics, um, you may also want to consider. So, for instance, like you know, one of the with the exploding kittens, we use Adjust, uh, and the Adjust dashboard, the, the Adjust uh, server is able to collect that data and then store it in Snowflake and then build our own uh, custom visualizations with Tableau. But if you let's say you're not trying to do all that just yet, Firebase is awesome because they all, they give you the out of the box analytics that you know, show your activity, your retention, where your traffic is coming from, uh, and a bunch of good metrics like that. So yes, you, you can go wrong with Firebase, but I won't say that it's a catch-all as far as analytics go. 
might be a good way to start off. And then as you grow, maybe go into like an adjust platform. It gets costly, right? The adjust stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can negotiate deals with them, but, uh, it's, you know, it's not like dirt cheap. Uh, it can be in the lower the tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's not the only, it's, it's that by far not the, the only way you can track data. Uh, they just, they, they have a specialty, which is mobile measurement, but you can, you can, you can do it yourself. Uh, in fact, you can use Google Analytics and then and then dump that data into your own warehouse and then and then run queries on it. So you know, it just depends on how 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 much work you want to do. I've heard really good things about Mixpanel too. So take a look at that. And they've got really good startup friendly packaging where you are really you know you like you said retention tracking where people are what people are doing within the app, how long they're staying, what is that flow, where is that drop off, and so. There's another yeah. option too for you. Yeah, mixed panel amplitude, of course, Firebase. So that that you know that are key players in that space for sure. Yeah, cool. And I'll get to this last question before because I think it's a valuable question before we go to the next app audit. But True Dreams asks, it's not really related to the mobile space, but what kind of tip do you have for startups who are just starting out their, their own company? Yes, uh, that's a great question. Uh, and I, I get excited about these also because I'm, I'm an entrepreneur or at least like self-proclaimed. So I think for me, if I can go back and do it all again, the two things that I would have considered would be uh, the business model. You know what I'm saying? Because I, for me, it's easy to get on something that I'm excited about, but not really think through, uh, okay, what if this was to become something I would spend more time on or so I will make sure that the business model is down pat. Doesn't mean you have to try to start making money right away, but you know, it should definitely be considered how you're gonna sustain this and how it can become a successful venture. The second thing would be user experience. And when I say user experience, I mean the 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 method that you plan for users to easily, when I say easy, I mean easily get up and running in your product so that they can start communicating the value to other people. Um, because that's ultimately gonna drive your user growth with the acquisition side of things. So if you think about the user experience uh, before you get deep into product development, that's also key as well. If you if you can spare the time or the the, re the resources, get an intern to help you with user research because it's important to get a sense of how people respond to what you're putting out there. So your product market fit could be uh, on point too. Yeah, I mean, one of the books I read by Paul Jarvis was like a company of one. He talks about the value of staying small. And I like what he said about MVP. We all know what MVP is, but he actually rephrased the, the P to minimum viable profit. And so think about that. Like, how do you get there really fast? And I think what helped me in, in growing my business was just building the audience first. Like first, I was just trying to learn with the podcast and interviewing people like yourself, Chuka, and trying to learn from them. And so it was trying to fill a space that I felt needed. And then when you have that audience, they'll tell you what they think that you're good at. And so it's a great way of doing it if you have the time or if you're trying to do it on the side, which I did for the like first six months of the podcast. It was just all on the side, nights and weekends, trying to learn from the people that I really admired in the app space. So building that audience and then getting to what Chuka said too is that, business model and that minimum viable profit. How do you make that profit first and foremost? Okay, let's go into, whoops. Really need a producer, but then I wouldn't trust a producer. I'm like, who would that producer be? Okay, let's get into this chain cars and then I will give you the question this. So this is Mohammed and he says, downloads, that's it. <laughs> it's like, I wanna focus on downloads. So it looks like, it is a game, Chain Cars, Impossible Stunts. It looks pretty cool. It's got pretty good reviews, but the reviews are kind of bad. So I'll try to improve that. It's about th a little bit under three. Yeah, it's 2.7. I'm going to go all the way down. What I like about Google. So it's got a good amount of downloads already. But you want to start off with this, Chuka? He's got 500,000 downloads. The reviews are 2.7, but he's got a good amount of reviews and a good amount of downloads. What kind of suggestions do you got for him without actually looking at the app? Yeah, so um, I like that it's cool. This one's a free to play app, so that's tight. Uh, and uh, I see some good activity on the screenshots also. So I think that's engaging, you know, that's attention grabbing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then yes, like review, so he's that downloads, you know, the, the key thing is uh, downloads. Uh, I think in this case, this is where the reviews can be really helpful because at the end of the day, 
you know, people do read reviews just like you would on Amazon if you were pondering. So uh, when you see a one star review or two star review, um, that should be a red flag. It, it is a red flag to someone who's seeing it, but for the, from the developer standpoint, they should really take heed as to why. Uh, like, what, okay, why would somebody give it th this many? And the, the bad thing with Google is that they show that bar that bar graph. You know, <laughs> so the bar graph tells you, okay, like this is the this is what's skewing the positive re review rate down. So I would really consider uh, why you have that many one star reviews. Uh, honestly, if you fix that, then that would fix a lot of things, you know, definitely fix the positive feedback, which will ultimately fi fix the download. It seems like a great idea. I haven't played it yet, but, um, you know, it, it, it seems like a different car racing application. And uh, I think by virtue of that, people already love car racing games in the app stores. Mm -hmm. uh, CSR has like proven that, but um, whatever makes yours unique, uh, I would I would capitalize on the user feedback. Yeah, I agree. I think that's the first thing that stands out to me without downloading the app. The the keywords seem pretty optimized, in my opinion. It looks like you're you're doing a good job there. One thing that I would try to think about too is the the long description. I'm trying to run some A/B tests on this to figure out what value H2 tags have on a long description. But it's Google, right? And it's SEO. They're very much SEO focused. So all the things that you know about SEO with H2 tags being super important. I've been doing this with clients when I've been doing Google Play ASO is having some H2 tags, usually the first couple of sentences with good keywords that I want to target. So that first sentence right here in the long description, I usually have a the, the keywords that I'm targeting with an H2 tag. And one thing to note that I just discovered is that H2 tag isn't bolded like it would be on a normal website. It, you need to put that bold in there. So play around with that because if you know anything about SEO, Google tends to wait words that have these h2 tags or bolded or h3 tags a little bit higher than a normal like paragraph text and then the last thing i would say from this aso perspective would be what we found is having a more conversion rate optimized short description is better so like you know this is very keyword optimized but an example for one of our clients would be like it was a phone calling app but like you know, we support 80,000, I don't know if it's 80,000, but like 800,000 numbers, 80,000 countries, whatever it is, those kind of, kind of those key social proof metrics we tend to have in the short description. And we've seen pretty good results when you run A-B tests on that. So is there a way to marry having some social proof with the keywords that you want to target into that short description? You should see an increase in conversions when you do that. Cool. Anything you want to add, Chuka? No, I mean, you make a good point. I, I'm looking at the comments as well. And uh, Joe's okay. also making some good points. Joe and Vinayak about uh, instant, the, the the feature where you can easily play the game. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Google does, of course, do the recommendation thing on the right. So when you're looking at the right side and you see the applications that have four or five stars or four and a half stars, I would consider what makes what gives those uh, th high, high reviews like that. And then maybe put, like potentially learn from them, but yes, uh, I would consider that. The, the long description also, you touched on that a little bit, Steve, is, uh, is unique. I don't, I don't have data about what kind of impact that, that has, but I know less is always more. That's just a general life philosophy. So, um, you know, you're, 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 an app, you're an entertainment app. You don't, you know, you're not a, it's not a book, <laughs> you know, you want people to, re you want them to play, not read. So yeah. get them in there as fast as, as possible. And uh, you know, fix those one star ratings. Yeah, Joe says app icon and screenshots are great. Seeing more one stars than five stars would make me find another app though. You really need to the, read the one star review and fix what your customers are saying. And you know, they're doing a good job of responding. What I did say back and I heard somebody emailed me about this. I said, you know, back in the days, Apple actually indexed your reviews. And so in 2015, Chuka, like we would put a couple of different reviews into the app store reviews you know, manually or hack it. And we see an increase in keyword rankings. And so I said, you know, try doing that when you're responding to reviews. And so one of one, one guy in the audience tried it and he said, one app saw good results and another app didn't see that great of results and could be just more competitive. So think about as you're responding to these one stars or even five stars, think about how you can sort of leverage ASO and have some keywords in your response as well. All right, Vivek, Vivek, Vina. Vignac says, in Google Play, add instant feature for your games. That really works well. What's that instant feature? 
Do you know that? Uh, I mean, it's, it's this thing where it's kind of like, uh, you, are you familiar with playable ads? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Of course you are. Yeah. Like, so, so my understanding, and I don't have much knowledge about it, but my understanding is it works similarly God. where it's like a, a sneak peek. Um, but it's, it's basically like a playable ad within the Google Play Store. Cool. Yeah. It says Vignac said, users can try your game without installing. Vignac, let's, let's come on. Let's, let's do a video about that. That might be, that would be interesting for us to share. Okay, there, before we get into the next app audit, I did put something here. So this is a good question of True Dreams. For games, should we keep the in-app purchase higher or lower? Does the lower in-app purchase make the users purchase more? I think you're the, you're the man for this. Uh, okay, so that, that's, that, that is a good question. Uh, that generally, well, I will say it depends on the kind of uh, game economy that you have. But if you have a bundle, like, so if you have a, a, a you know, like a, a in-game currency, uh, typically there will be different tiers. So the, the trick is that, of course, the more you give, uh, the more expensive, but with discounts, right? And then that way you're trying to skew, uh, it's called contextual pricing. So you're trying to skew uh, uh, people purchasing to the higher bundles. But there are some people who, no matter how sweet the deal is for the $20, the nineteen ninety nine bundle, they're just gonna want, want to go for the four ninety nine one, so I would say like you know consider that as a uh, you know the strategy for getting folks to convert is like what they're buying. Make sure that you have tiers that appeal to the whales, the dolphins, the minnows, the salmon, and you know the different uh, uh, skills of spenders. Then in terms of what they're spending on in the game, that comes that comes to game design. You know like uh, you, you, the whole idea is that you want someone to always be able to send their currency. You never want to have a situation where they have more than they can spend on. So uh, I would err on the side of the items in the game being able to take the in that part the the in-game currency faster than not. Uh, and of course, good game design will make sure that people can also get whatever they're paying for for free as well with the effort. You know, so the whole the whole idea with IAP is that it, it's a uh, uh, it, it's a time valuation system where uh, I know I can grind and get this, but I'm just going to pay 20 bucks and get it, you know? Um, and then you may have an exclusive item that's, that's IP only, but I, I would, I would not do that too much because you could get backlash from users. They'll, they'll say you're trying to, uh, you know, cash grab and whatnot. Yeah. I love it. I'm glad you're here. Cause I think you answer that way better than I could have. Okay. Let me get into the next app audit. And this one I'm really excited about, Chico. It's an earthquake alerts app. It's the best earthquake app. And you know what we're finding from these app audits is some legit apps out there, right? Number 32 in weather, about 13,000 reviews, 4.7. Look, it looks like you're doing pretty well without screenshot optimization, but I might want to put some screenshot optimization in here. Like I've always, I've shared this case study in the past. We added social proof into the screenshots and granted, the before screenshots weren't as pretty. And when we did the revamp and adding social proof really led to a like almost double 91% increase in downloads just by adding no change to keywords, just by doing that screenshot optimization. So I would think about screenshot optimization. Look, granted, you've done really well already, but think about screenshot optimization here too. You want to add anything, Chico? going silent i i like uh you know 4.7 stars out of five is pretty awesome uh and it feels like it does a lot of uh, marketing for itself which uh which is great so uh i mean yeah i don't i don't necessarily have i, I like i'm not i'm not as familiar with earthquake apps because i see them as like just the a, a functional uh the goal the goal is simple you know you want to get information um and then just stay informed on uh, what's going on with earthquake? So if if there's a sense of urgency as to like time, okay, I see. I think it says timely. Yes, you know. So if someone gets a sense that they're gonna be in the know and be alerted as quick as possible, that's all one can ask for, you know. Um, and if if you do that right, then everything else is just a question of uh, optimizing. Yeah, yeah and, I mean, and Steve, when when you yeah. say uh, screenshot optimization, can you be more specific with what you're referring to? I was trying to catch it. Uh, looking at the screenshots. Yeah, like, so here, here's a great example. And here's what I typically see, Chuka, is like six years worth of earthquake history, you know, 
the only earthquake app to display focal mechanisms and moment tensor tensors. So those are things that people are never going to read, but they should uh, be words on here yes, gotcha. in the screenshots. And that's gotcha, what I mean. Yes, yes. Like that's social proof. If you're the only earthquake app to do something, you put it into the screenshots. Like don't just yes. leave it. Yes, it's advertising. Yeah, yeah, it's free advertising space. So Mac, like capitalize on that. Yeah. So let's get into the app because the the what they want to talk about is user conversion. So that's interesting. And monetization, which I love. Can't wait. All right. Let's do so it. Here's here's the app. Yeah. All right. Only while using. I don't like this. I always say don't do this. Don't ask me for notifications. Like tell me a reason why. I think like I don't know if we, you, we talked about this in our first interview, Chica, you're like push notifications are a great way to get users back into it. It's one of the most overlooked, but when you ask for it right upon launch, I'm usually more amped to say, don't allow because there's mm -hmm. no reason for me to do it. So maybe even after I go through it, it might be better. Yes, definitely. Yeah. You want, like you want to give a reason. We hope you will enjoy our app. Come on. Let's just, you will enjoy our <laughs> app. Let's, let's be presumptive here. Uh, customize the filter. A lot of text. That's the one thing about this onboarding process. A lot of text. So yeah, maybe this is a great way to ask for the alerts, customize the alerts. You know, maybe I can do the push notifications here. Mm -hmm. Get more with subscription. Let's see. Please subscribe. Okay. So maybe there's a subscription. Uh, all right. One of the things I always say is have your subscription page. Let's try to find it premium. Ooh, this is nasty on the actual onboarding process. So you just told me get more with subscription. Show me that like subscribe or show me get more with subscription. Show this pricing page. Now I think this price page pricing page, you've already done a phenomenal job in terms of what I'm going to guess. And I'll look at the data in a little bit is you're getting a good amount of downloads, obviously, but you're probably not doing a good enough job getting people to subscribe. So with this, like I would totally revamp this pricing page. I just think it's not pretty. And a lot of people are not reading all this stuff. So there's a lot of things that you can do. I shared in our virtual summit now last week, come some of the features that really help a, that pricing page better convert. And you've got, it's so cheap right now that most people, I would think your core audience wants this data, right there, there's a reason why they're looking for an earthquake app. And so they're more likely to subscribe and given your pricing so cheap that there's no reason why they wouldn't. So I think you can really optimize this page. I guess I can go into some of the topics, but I think it would be it would take up the rest of the call if I went into <laughs> this page, <laughs> but I'll give it up to you. I'll give the floor, I'll give the mic to you, Chico. I know I a hundred percent agree. Uh, Joe agrees with us as well. You know, I think that if you're, uh, y y your best friend should be the value proposition to your users when it comes to conversion. And uh, you want to be able to just very, very distinctly communicate that and um, make it super easy also to get started. So that that conversion user experience is key. Uh, I do see more. T I mean, I get that there's a lot of things being offered, but you know, it should be explained better. Uh, the free trial too, I think is, is cool. So maybe that's, that's, you know, it could just use a bit more, uh, like embellishments, but the whole idea is that you want to just type, clean up this page so that uh, it's more straight to the point. People know exactly what they're getting and they click and then, then, then they, they're good to go. Yeah. And I'll point to you one of the most beautiful pricing pages that I love. It's through the Reflectly app, but you know, I think here, let me try to show you guys something like this. So like, this is a clean pricing page, right? Get 38% happier, really benefit oriented. What's in it? So these bullet points compared to your bullet points, right, are not that pretty. And then some success stories. Here's what I get from basic versus premium. Here's the most asked questions and so forth. And so this is, and I kind of like this, Chuka, and I don't have data to point this, but essentially like I'm opting in to continue, right? So I think yes. what I'm, I like is that I'm telling you, I want to, so this, this page should convert a lot better if I was, because I pressed the continue rather than just yes. showing the page. So yes. I kind of like this pricing page a lot. Yes. Yeah. And notice that they also, well, so where does I start yearly plan? Mm -hmm. I think that's also pretty cool because they they click on it 
and then it highlights and then it can start. So there's also this like double opt-in uh, type of setup, which kind of tells me that they're they're confident. They're not, you know, they're not like as quick to want to like fool you into converting as much as they want you to make a conscious decision uh, into converting. So I think that's cool. I do like their user interface design though. I feel like that's a, it's just like a good looking, well thought out design. Yeah, totally. I love, I love it. It's so good. All right. I'm going to look up Salva. So I hope you don't mind Salva, but I'm going to look up your, your numbers. So I'll put you on blast a little bit. <laughs> all right i'm gonna go through all this loads so yeah look he's getting about according to sense tower which is pretty accurate he's getting about seven thousand downloads less than five thousand review revenue like this is an app that i would love to work with to like optimize that conversion because you have to think that people want this app right like that's just my assumption but there's so much you can do Elva, that would help you increase those conversions and looking at other apps and other pricing pages, it's going to really help you. So think about that. All right. Let me go through some of the comments. we got some good questions too. Joe, annual premium subscriptions, only $6.99. I know. So cheap. I think you're bumping to 20 bucks a year, man. You'd be making money. All right. Bump that up, Joe says. I agree. Joe. <laughs> Thinking about that song by Joe. I think his name is just Joe, right? <laughs> Bump that. Yeah. It's going on in my head that. Rather than saying get more with subscription, show them what you get. I agree. And then Joe, a lot of comments. Needs a major UI UX rehaul. You're getting the downloads, which is the hard part. Fix the interface and revamp the, or and reap the rewards. I agree with Joe on that. And I think Chuka and I both agree on that. Okay. All right, let me go through some of the questions. I don't think we're gonna get to the last phishing app. So we might get that to that next week, but... True Dreams asks, does ad does running ads in cheaper cheaper countries, like if you run ads in the US is expensive? Uh, okay, does running ads in cheaper countries affect the rankings in the US too? Any thoughts? Uh, yes, and so does yeah. So does does running ads in cheaper countries affect the rankings in the US? Uh, you, you know, let me put it this way. Uh, there is something called uh, uh, correlated organic uplift, and uh, you know, really, what that is is if you have uh, if you if you drive uh, users through ad spend, the, the 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 bump that they get you can increase your ranking just by virtue of downloads, and then your visibility in the app store increases, and then more people download you because they see your application. So that so that is a it's like a hack, you know, it's a little bit of a hack, but it's possible. And then also, of course, when you bring more uh, people in, they can bring people in as well uh, because they're, qual they're quality users, not just anyone, right? You have to bring a specific quality of user in for them to have a higher virality than the organic downloads. So that's also another way that um, driving ads can, uh, can increase your, your ranking um, or your, your sort of position, if you will. But I will say that you know, like that that that's out of the window if you're going for cheaper countries with lower quality users. Um, if you bring your low quality users, it's not going to really push. It, it may get you like the downloads you're looking for, but it may not get you the the visibility that can also ultimately trickle into uh, the U.S., for instance. But when we when we're talking about cheaper countries, there's cheaper than the U.S. and then there's like cheap countries. You know, like you're, like Indonesia is a cheap country. Uh, Philippines is cheap, right? Then cheaper countries like the Nordics, mo most of the Nordic countries are generally cheaper than the US, but they're not like cheap, cheap, you know? So I think it really just depends on, uh, on, on the angle that you're looking at it to. I like that distinct distinction. <laughs> there's cheaper countries and there's cheap countries. <laughs> I like that, man. All right. What is the best way to contact users if an app gets deleted by the Play Store? That I have no idea. <laughs> well, I do think that there there was a company I was working with called CleverTap, and they have this ghost notification. And so one way to do it, you need their SDK, and they kind of pointed this out. But essentially, they'll send push notifications, just ghosts. It's not like a real one, just to see if the app has been deleted or is still in there. And then the best way to contact them is through email. So you probably need to grab their email addresses, get their permission, and then use a platform like CleverTap where they'll tell you, hey, this user, Steve, has deleted your app. We've tried this push notifications. So they're kind of guessing at the same time, but they kind of have a good estimate on who's deleted the app and who's still on the platform. Okay. 
If there's any other questions, leave them below. We got about four minutes left. We'll go through this fishing app real quick and then we'll let Chuka go and get on his day. All right. So the question that Jenya, Jenya asked is pricing and screenshots. So I think the screenshots are freaking phenomenal. Catch more 70% of anglers report catch increase. Love these screenshots. There's nothing I can say. The, the text is big. The it's very benefit oriented and uh, yeah, like I, I just, I like it. There's nothing I can say about these screenshots. I think they're really good. Yeah. Uh, cool. And then let me go into the app because she did talk about uh, pricing. So let's, let's take a look at that. All right. Top fish. I fish. I care. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Increase notification. See, this is the way to, to ask for notifications, right? Chica, like using notifications increases your chance of success by 100%. <laughs> 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 it's just a silly number that I'm like, all right, I would even try yeah. like one, like 119. So I found yeah. that like using odd numbers is, it makes me feel more, it feels like more trustworthy. So mm. again, like if you want me to pay, ask for the money, I don't know where I can pay. So I think this is a problem that most people, this page should be part of your onboarding flow. You have to show people that there is a premium option. Look, I had to go find it. And I'm sure if I use the app, you'll lock me. You know, I always hear this from clients. Oh yeah. You know, once you go on your fish first fishing boat, you're gonna, that's when we show you the pricing page. I get it. It's cool. You want to be cool and like not so like aggressive in your face, but we've seen good results. The data supports that if you show this pricing page early on in the app journey, you're likely to increase conversions. I don't know about mm -hmm. games as much, but for subscription based apps, we have the data that says, yes, it is true. Mm. That makes sense. I like this. So I like that. Again, the thing that I would say about this pricing page is your screenshots are beautiful. You're telling me all the benefits of a screenshot, but yet when I get here, the benefits kind of go away and you're talking about more of the features, which is fine. But I think I still want this, like, you know, catch 70% more kind of like the reflectly page that said you're 38% happier with reflectly premium. Is there something that you can say this 70% you catch more on this premium by having premium, right? So I think I would try to add more of those benefit oriented type of stuff rather than not. So that's one thing that I would say too. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Anything else you want to add Chico? Not necessarily. I'm, I'm with you on the just communication as to the value proposition for conversion. Uh, I, I don't know as much about the fishing audience. They may, they obviously know more than I would, uh, but you know, still the, there are still mobile best practices that, that I would say are generally applicable. Yeah. Agreed. 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 Okay. Fish are there. Oh, that's cool. So you get to see the feed. Again, I think when people bring up like, we're not making we're not converting that much. I think it's because they're not doing a good enough job trying to ask for the money. I mean, you're complaining that we're not you know, converting enough users, but you're also not showing the users that they can actually convert. So it's sort of like a, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what the right word is, but I know there is a word. And are these like that. actual fish? Is this like a actual fish or like a, a, like a fishing simulation? I think this is actual fish. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Nice, nice. So like it's for people who are fishing people. That's why I'm like, you know, you have an audience it's a core audience, right? Like it's sort of these niche apps on like a fitness app where it might be anything like this is a very niche app. So you should get a higher conversion rate. You have to show your pricing a little bit more and so forth. So like, don't, don't be afraid of being a little bit more aggressive with some of the pricing stuff too. Mm -hmm. All right. True dream says, bye. Cool. Uh, all right, let's go through some of the comments and then we'll say goodbye. All right. Aldolfo Demetrio says running ads does get me more downloads, but the ad revenue does not increase at all. All right. Well, I was thinking too, like Google play, it shows the download numbers. So that might be an added benefit. Like if you get cheaper countries, cheaper countries can also result in more crashes like Android devices mess up your cash rate. So be careful with that. Great points here. Uh, the payments will be charged, et cetera. Trex isn't rude. Okay. So 
I don't know. I guess this, this app, Joe says this app is saying the payments will be charged to your Apple account ID, blah, blah, blah. It, that text isn't required anymore. So guess if that's helpful for you. And then he says that it will help you free up more valuable screen real estate on your subscription plan. All right. Chuka, any parting words on your end, my friend? Yeah, no, I mean, as always, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to talk about um, ASO and uh, just app optimization. Uh, I know it's like a, it's a, it, you know, that's, it's the world we live in. So uh, it's, and, and it's a world where uh, in, independent developers are always, you know, we, it, it's easy for us to be marginalized by, you know, the, the big players. So uh, the passion is really what remains. And of course, passion oftentimes can materialize into a uh, good business. So I'm grateful to, be a part of this conversation and, you know, definitely happy to always come back. Thanks brother. Well, you're all, you got an open invite. Jen just put a question in. So Jen, what is your regular conversion rate for niche apps? I think it just depends across the board. We've seen clients that convert like 40%, really crazy 20%, but I think 20% is a good goal to try to hit for, but yeah, we've seen some really high end clients getting higher conversions. So Chuka, the website, if you guys want to learn more about what Chuka has got going on as well, check him out on LinkedIn. I will link that into, that's already linked up into the description below. His company is called diversity with the city like town.io. Look, having a diverse team is really valuable, not just from like an effective an evaluation perspective, but you get different worldviews and having more of a diverse team gets you some of this knowledge that like. I have my own worldview. Chuka has his, but when we combine them, it makes for a better mix. So it is diversity.io. Check it out there. Chuka, if the audience wants to follow up with you and connect with you in any other way, you want to send them anywhere else? Uh, yes, LinkedIn. Uh, my name is, well, my name is right there. It's very, very easy. To, I'm the only one of that in the whole world. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. And then of course, uh, my email is my first name at diversity.io. If anybody wants to get a hold of me, do that as well. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this, man. I appreciate our friendship and that we got to do this a couple of different times. So check it out. It is diversity.io. Chuka, thank you so much. Thank Absolutely. you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next week, same time, 9 a.m. Pacific, and I'll catch you later. Bye. Awesome. Thanks, guys.